the perception of trauma. So I was watching your video where you go through there's like <laughs> 10 um, indicators of trauma, childhood trauma, right? And mm -hmm. um, we hear about like uh, the Sahaba and the Umbiya who went through the greatest of trials. So you can say by, I don't know, by definition almost, they had the most trauma, but there was something about how they were perceiving it, how they dealt with it that yes. it didn't necessarily um, debilitate them. So would you say in terms of like, because an example to bring it to kind of contemporary life is like people from our generation or my generation, um, they might have, um, when they used to go masjid or something, they might have got the odd uh, slap or whatever, right? Um, but it was... <laughs> It, it was like an accepted, uh, it was like an accepted mm. norm. So like, say if you were to do that today, it, it, it'll be like an incident that's like shocking because it's not common, I, I'd yeah. say. Whereas if, if you're in an environment and it's within reason, obviously it's not like crazy. Yes. People from like, they don't come out of that thinking they've been traumatized. So then mm. when these people speak to others who say they suffer physical abuse, so there's something to do with perception in there. What would you say on that? Yeah, I think this is a can of worms, to be honest. And and yeah, maybe we can talk about it in a in a future episode. But yes, the thing mm -hmm. is, like with trauma, trauma. Yes, I mean it's it's very topical. Um, trauma. I mean it's it's at the perception of the individual. So uh, the in mental health. I mean, I'll just give you an example, like uh, what I mean by trauma. Uh, how I the kind of the patients I see and. So I, I was uh, treating when I was in Manchester, there was a, a Muslim girl uh, from Manchester, 17 year old. So she was admitted to the hospital I was working at because uh, she was engaging in very destructive and reckless behavior, uh, self-harming, trying to take overdoses, trying to jump off a bridge, uh, you know, using alcohol and drugs. And she, she had, so what she would say she had complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. So there's a distinction between trauma and post-traumatic stress disorder. Not everybody who suffers trauma uh, develops PTSD. Okay. Um, so PTSD, like classically, you know, war veterans that come back, uh, for example, U S veterans, a lot of them have PTSD, even the British army, uh, because of, uh, what's, ha what they witnessed or what they've engaged in, you know, killing innocent civilians and seeing all this traumatic stuff. And then they get flashbacks and then they get, you know, they relive that, that nightmare and a lot of them end up committing suicide. So that's kind of really the end of trauma that I see. So this girl. Uh, anyway, she ended up, she couldn't be managed safely in the community. So she ended up being admitted to the psychiatric intensive care unit. And, uh, during the course of the assessment, what she disclosed was basically she was being sexually abused by her own father, um, in the house, um, uh, subhanAllah, Yani. And what was worse was that she, when she disclosed it to her mother and her brothers, um, they said, they kind of said, don't talk about it. Uh, kind they brushed it under the carpet and, mm -hmm. um. They said, they said that, you know, you will bring shame to the family. So, uh, and the sexual abuse continued, subhanAllah, uh, by, by her father, you know? Uh, so she was being constantly traumatized, uh, in an, in a, in a place of which should be a place of safety. Right. So, um, it got to the point where she became so psychologically damaged, um, that she started, you know, wanting to kill herself and take drugs to kind of escape that, that experience. Um, so that, that's kind of the, when I talk about trauma and PTSD, that's the kind of level we're talking about. What you're saying is, you know, like if somebody like gets a slap, uh, or I don't know, uh, somebody gets shouted at, um, you know, yes, that's an unpleasant experience, but I don't, I wouldn't classify it as a traumatic experience. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, people uh, tend to now, especially with kind of, um, uh, uh social media you know people tend to um over egg this concept or oh, I, I had a traumatic experience um but when you dig deeper a lot of it is just like normal like we know the dunya is a test for us we're not going to live a comfortable life right you know we're not going to have a smooth sailing life so we're going to have difficult life experiences and i think we need to empower our youth and our children that look you know you need to be able to be resilient and deal with stresses and and uh, tension and you know difficult life circumstances and again going back to the sira we learn about how the anbiya how the prophet sallam they dealt with these issues you know we talk about trauma the prophet sallam he lost three of his sons in in childhood he lost six of his children during his lifetime you know 
in a society where having a, a son was everything. And not just that, his own uncle, uh, Abu Lahab, used to make fun of him when he lost his, his sons, you know, Abdullah and Qasim and Ibrahim. So the thing is, like, how did he deal with that traumatic experience? Yes, he was a prophet of Allah, but he was a human being, right? He had uh, kind of psychological uh, experiences. And uh, if we l read the seerah, yeah, we can learn from it and inshallah benefit from it in terms of dealing with issues uh, and dealing with, you know, uh, difficulties. The other thing is also like, alhamdulillah, having a belief in the afterlife is also in itself, you know, uh, a way to kind of deal with problems and trauma. So atheists, why do atheists struggle? Because they don't believe in an afterlife. So if they go through a difficult experience, they, they can't make sense of it. <laughs> like you, you, you hear about people who've lost a child uh, and then they end up committing suicide themselves because they think, you know, that my child has died. There's nothing for me to live for now.